this is David. We're talking again about Angular, the framework for building JavaScript single page application. We're walking through this tutorial right here. We finished the application shell and now we're actually on step one of the tutorial, the hero editor. Now we're going to continue to use the Angular CLI to create some of our components here. For example, this line, ng generate component heroes, will do exactly what it says. It'll generate a component named heroes and that component consists of several files. So if I go to my directory here and run that command you see that it created a heroes.component.html a heroes.component.spec.ts, a heroes.component.ts, and a heroes.component.css. Um, so it created an HTML page, a TypeScript file, which is a strongly typed language that can transpile the JavaScript, and a CSS file. I put them all into this heroes subfolder of the source app folder. So I still have Visual Studio Code open and I can see that underneath app there's my heroes folder and there are all these files that are created. Here's my component right here. It's a class. This export keyword means that it's a public class. It can be used by other components and then up here it's decorated with the component which tells it look for app-heroes and when you find it use this template URL which is a combination of HTML and some data bound things uh, and any style sheets in this array here identified by style URLs. We also have this implements on a knit which adds a constructor and the ng on a knit which can be useful later on when we start doing dependency injection. All right, all right, let's go down here and what we want to do is we're going to take our heroes components.ts which right now looks just like this and we'll notice that we're going to add a property to it. We'll call that property hero. And we'll give it a value of windstorm. So that's our hero. Our, one, our first superhero is named windstorm. Now we could make this strongly typed, but we're not going to. We're just going to set a value to it because it is a string. And then we're going to use that in our HTML template by adding hero. So let's do that in our HTML template right here. We'll replace that just with the word hero surrounded by these curly braces. So now that hero property is bound. It's using one-way data binding. And we should, when this displays, it should display the word windstorm because that's the value of hero. Now we need to get, we've just created this new heroes.component. Uh, we want to get it into our page already. And if you remember, that page is being displayed by this app.component.ts and this HTML right here. So let's grab that app.component.html and in there we're going to add this app-heroes. It looks like an HTML tag, but it's actually, if I grab the whole thing here, replace it with that, uh, we have the title and we have app.heroes. Uh, it's actually an Angular tag, a custom Angular tag. And app.heroes is defined here in our heroes component. That's the selector. Whenever we find that tag app.heroes, we're going to use this HTML template and these style sheets. So now, when we open up our page, we see that we now have the title, Tour of Heroes, and we have the, this app.heroes component, which displays just the data bound hero string windstorm right here. So we see some, some data binding in action, and we also see a component inside of a component. Let's come back to here, and the next step is instead of just having the text of a hero, let's have an entire hero class. So let's build that class here. We'll call it hero.ts. So in my app folder, I'll create a new file called hero.ts. 
and in there I'll add this class it has two properties an ID of type number and a name of type string and now we have a class we can actually create instances of that class just like we can languages like C sharp now to use that we're going to have to import so the, we'll, we'll, we'll put this into the hero component to you yes and we're gonna have to import the hero class from this file we just this hero file we just created we use that syntax here and once we've done that then instead of having hero pointing to a string we have a cap of type hero this class we created up here and set it equal to an instance of that class where the ID is equal to one and the name is equal to windstorm let's go ahead and do that copy this and paste it into the heroes component class right there and so now we'll do that and save it and that's almost right here but now we have hero instead of being a string is an object and you remember that over here we were just displaying hero so now we have object object wasn't quite exactly what we want so let's go on back here and we have to change that and now instead of having just hero we're going to have hero dot name will bind to that and next to the word ID we'll have hero dot ID and down here we'll have hero dot name again and there's some format HTML around that so let's do this in our heroes component instead of just that we'll do all that and save it with control s and now you see windstorm details I so hero dot name details and an h2 tag and then ID colon and then the hero ID which is one and then name colon and hero dot name which is windstorm you see that data binding in action right here if we wanted to make this uppercase automatically there is we can use this pipe command and pipe it to uppercase or lowercase or there's a bunch of different things we could pipe it to but let's do that we'll change this tag here and just pipe it to uppercase and save it and I go back here and windstorm here is uppercase but it's still data bound uh, the other thing we might want to do is maybe we want to make this editable editable so somebody could change the name of this and we've only shown one-way data binding let's go with two-way data binding now and the way we do two-way data binding in angular is with this syntax here we'll take a property that you want to bind to in this case there's an angular property called ng model if I click on it it shows me the help on that and oh, there's scroll back down again um, right here we'll bind the name of the property I want to value and what that will do is it will not only show the value of this property in bound to this but it'll be two ways so if this changes in other words if somebody types into this text box then the value of the property itself will change as well so it's two-way data binding so let's do that where we had just the name and hero dot name we're going to replace that with this syntax here so this line right here gets replaced with that and when I save that come back here it automatically reloads and nothing happens ah because we've forgotten a step and the step that we've forgotten is described right down here in order to use this two-way data, data binding with the uh, square bracket and parentheses we something people call that a banana in a box in order to use ng model we need to tell our application about that and that is told, stored in something called the forms module which is in the the forms angular slash forms so we need to import that and we add, add it to our imports and the easiest place to do that is in kind of a global settings thing called app.module.ts so if we open up app.module.ts right here you'll see that there are things that are already imported like a browser module an app routing module we need to add to that we need to import also the forms module so let's do that right here 
we don't need the routing yet. And the squiggly line says it doesn't know what forms module is. There's nowhere to find that. And that's because we need to add up at the top here an import to tell it where to find the forms module. So let's do that. And it says import forms modular from this angular slash forms. And notice the squiggly line went away when we did that. I'll save that. All right. Once I've done that, then notice that I actually get some output here. It understood this. And the output has changed. Now I have a text box here. And that text box, the value of that text box is bound to hero.name. And it's a two-way binding. So not only is the name displayed here in the text box, but also if I change that name, then the value of the actual property changes. And anything bound to it, for example, this right here, also changed automatically right away. So in this example, we've actually started our hero editor and we've done shown one-way data binding here and here and two-way data binding here. In the next module, we'll do data binding that'll loop through a collection of items. This is David. Thank you for watching.